What exactly is holding back the Starship launch? The answer is Raptor's reliability. In fact, Starship Super Heavy's engine is in trouble and not ready for liftoff. Meanwhile, Blue Origin just delivered enough two BE-4 engines for ULA after years of delays, and the race finally starts. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On October 21st, one day after SpaceX had stacked Ship 24 on top of Super Heavy Booster 7, SpaceX technicians worked to swap the Raptor engine on Booster 7. A few moments later, the removed engine was carted away. The mobile work platform with the new replacement Raptor was immediately raised ahead of installation onto the booster. The implied issue with the Raptor that was removed is likely to blame for the delay of the static fire test on the vehicle. So the engine swap could clear the way for a repeat static fire test as soon as possible this week. SpaceX didn't explain exactly why the engine had to be replaced, but one big problem that they still haven't solved with Raptor 2 is heating. The combustion chamber of a Raptor 2 is exposed to a gigawatt of heat. That is enough to melt every known material. To stop these engines from melting away takes some serious engineering, like pumping cryogenic fuel around the engine to cool it. But these systems are difficult to tune and perfect. In other situations, it's possible the engine is just slightly off nominal after one of the static fires, and they'd rather swap it out so they can study why it behaved that way. SpaceX likely knows the reliability they need and are striving towards that early and investigating anything less than perfection. This way they can learn from it without risking of destroying the physical evidence. Besides, thanks to a picture from RGV Aerial, it's clearly seen a massive dent on the side of the engine bell of Ship 24. In addition, the visible cable work inside the skirt looks charred and half destroyed. However, all of this might be nothing. Being deep in a hardware-rich development program where you have dozens of replacement engines and an entire other ship and two other boosters almost finished means it's just not a big deal if something gets damaged. Honestly, any rocket company will inevitably discover problems and make mistakes during development, especially when they prioritize speed over perfection. Immediately before Falcon 9's first launch, SpaceX found cracks on the end of F-9's S-2's MVAC nozzle and literally snipped off the end of the nozzle by hand to avoid big delays. The launch was a perfect success and Falcon 9 is now the most reliable rocket in history. I have seen quite a few people talking about the reliability and maturity of the Raptors. I've seen people compare the BE-4 with the Raptor, saying the BE-4 is more mature while it's only fired on a test stand but I believe that the Raptor would be a pretty reliable engine. The problem is that a Raptor has to do a lot more than launch a rocket. There are some points that Raptor engines have to do what no other rocket engine does. One, light the engine close to the ground without any suppression system or flame trench. Two, Raptor has some of the most aggressive gimbaling of any rocket engine. Three, needs to keep firing during the G-forces of the flip. And four, tanks and plumbing that work reliably in said conditions. SpaceX Raptors are extremely good engines with a very wide range of control and are capable of multiple restarts in a single mission. But to do this, they have to be tuned exactly right. It's therefore not surprising that an engine that is not performing absolutely perfectly may need to be removed for fine adjustments in order to ensure the ship launches with every engine in perfect condition. Indeed, the SpaceX Raptor engine is doing some things that have never been done before, so encountering some errors is completely inevitable. Some replacement with the Raptor will prolong the ground test process. However, all to assure the Starship will have the most perfect first orbital flight possible. On other news, Blue Origin completes its delivery of the BE-4 rocket engines for the first ULA Vulcan launch. On November 1st, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin Space Venture, says it's completed delivery of the two BE-4 rocket engines that are used next year for the first launch of the ULA Next Generation Vulcan Centaur rocket. A few days before that, ULA's chief, Mr. Tori Bruno, shared a video of its last huge test. The engine successfully completed a four and a half minute test, which covers the time it would spend during the flight as well. Actually, delivery to ULA's factory in Alabama comes years later than the schedule called for when ULA chose Blue Origin as the engine supplier for the Vulcan's first stage booster in 2018. In a tweet, ULA Alliance CEO Tori Bruno said one of the engines has already been placed on the booster and the other will join it momentarily. Blue Origin CEO Bob Smith said he'll be excited to see ULA's Vulcan fly. The BE-4 is a great engine and we're proud of Team Blue for achieving this milestone as part of ULA's team, Smith said in a news release. It's been a wonderful partnership and the ship set is the first of many more to come. 
Bruno and Bezos have been working together on the BE4 engine development project since 2014, but delays in development and testing led critics to taunt Blue Origin by asking, where are Tori's engines, Jeff? The next question is likely to be, when will Tori's rocket launch? Vulcan's first liftoff from Florida is currently set for the first quarter of 2023. Its main objective is to send Astrobotics Peregrine Lander on the first leg of its journey to the surface of the moon for a NASA-funded mission in preparation for the Artemis program's crewed lunar landings. Along the way, the launch vehicle will deploy two prototype satellites for Amazon's Project Cooper broadband internet constellation into low Earth orbit. The BE-4 engine is destined for use not only as the first stage booster of ULA's semi-reusable Vulcan Centaur rocket, but also on Blue Origin's orbital class New Glenn rocket, which is currently due to make debut in 2023. Each BE-4 engine provides 550,000 pounds of thrust with liquefied natural gas serving as the fuel. The engines are manufactured at Blue Origin's headquarters in Kent, Washington, and at a production facility in Huntsville, Alabama. Testing has been conducted at Blue Origin's West Texas facility and at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. The BE-4 is also one of the largest rocket engines in America as it produces more thrust than a SpaceX Raptor and the Aerojet Rocketdyne's RS-25 engine. Together, this trio will power the rockets this decade and the Raptor, the BE-4 and RS-25 produce 510,000, 540,000 and 512,000 pounds of thrust respectively. However, despite the BE-4 being more powerful, eventually it will be SpaceX's Starship rocket that will take the crown of being the world's largest rocket. That's due to the fact that Starship will take 33 Raptor 2 engines and generate a whopping 16 million pounds of thrust. Rocket and engine development go hand in hand, and the size of an engine is often determined by the design goals of the rocket. Starship's classification as a super heavy lift rocket is simply due to the fact it's designed to be used as a gateway to Mars. For this purpose, the upper stage, which separates after the rocket exits most of Earth's gravity, needs to be larger and accommodate more payload. This then increases the overall weight and requires the rocket itself to be larger too. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. And don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time.